All right. Hey, everybody. Um, I'm Mike. I've been in the crypto space for a long time, been building blockchain products uh, pretty much since the inception of Ethereum. Um, I built out a decentralized exchange, one of the first one called Radar Relay uh, back in 2017. And um, I'm currently working at a digital product studio called Many Uses, which is a um, more of a traditional finance, or sorry, traditional software studio, um, but we also work on blockchain products. Um, and the product I'm going to talk about today is called FungiProof. Um, so over the last eight months or more, as long as the NFT boom has been going on, uh, we noticed a couple of different problems. Um, the first was that there is sort of this NFT data obfuscation. Um, and what I mean by that is there are a lot of artists and collectors who are getting into this space who don't know a lot about crypto. And um, especially from like the collector side, they're purchasing NFTs and they don't necessarily know what they're purchasing. Um, so there's a lot of NFTs that are maybe built poorly. They're tied to um, you know traditional web hosting platforms that if people stop paying for the platform, then their image is just going to disappear from their NFT. Um, so that was one of the major problems that we kind of uh, identified early on and it was something that we wanted to tr try to figure out a solution for. Um, the second was that there's sort of this lack of sustainable renovation opportunities. Um, and when I say sustainable at this, at this event, I don't necessarily mean it from that sense. Um, what I'm referring to is that when you mint an NFT, it's an immutable object. It kind of doesn't have any other functionality once you've done that. Um, so you mint it, and then it just sort of doesn't have a lot of utility at that point in time. So um, there's new projects starting to come out where this is starting to change, and there's some like all kinds of you know really unique and fascinating ways that people are starting to use these. But uh, at the point in time when we started this platform, there was not much, so we wanted to come up with, with some way to do that. Um, so we built FungiProof, which is a platform that lets you grade, improve, and showcase your NFT. Um, and you can take a look at some of those. They're basically stickers, um, but everything is actually uh, digital. So it's not an actual physical, physical case, but it's NFTs tied to NFTs. So the platform itself lets you first grade an NFT. You do this by passing in a token ID and a contract address, or you can pass in a URL from any of the marketplaces like uh, OpenSea or Rarible, um, and it returns a score based on a bunch of different factors, which I'll go, to, go into a little deeper. Um, but then the second thing you can do once you have that grade is you can encase it. This sort of allows you to lock that data into a immutable registry that makes that information transparent and allows you to kind of highlight all the information about your, your NFT in one place. Um, and then the final is you can enrich it further. So that's the idea of appending new information to an existing NFT, NFT and uh, kind of being able to improve them or um, add carbon offsets to them, things like that. Hmm. Not sure if I did that. There we go. Um, so the way that this works is we first aggregate a bunch of data uh, from all over the place. We use uh, RPC calls directly out to Ethereum. We use APIs. We use subgraphs that we've built custom. And we're actually working pretty closely with the graph team to kind of come up with a standard on the uh, NFT collection side, um, subgraph collection side. And then we take all that information, we pump it through a, a grading algorithm. Then we tie all that information directly to the NFT using um, the enrichment contracts. Then we index this data into a public registry, and then you can enable the customized display. There we go. Um, so to dive a little bit more into the grading, um, we basically create a grading rubric, which is generated for different types of NFT assets. We've created a rubric right now, obviously, for the visual media asset. And in the future, we hope that that moves on to lots of different types of assets. Um, obviously, there's audio, audio already and, and a few others, but we're starting with visual media. Um, and then the grades are derived from a weighted point system. So instead of just a very simple like calculation on adding up the points or um, creating an average, we have a weighted system that sort of highlights different types of scores that are more important. Um, so for us, the first standard weighting system, we're focusing on decentralization, so making sure the NFT is actually fully decentralized. 
the user experience, um, which is things like if you load the NFT, it's going to actually show up in the browser. Um, you can store an, em an image in an NFT using like an IPFS scheme, and you can't actually just put that link into a browser and see the image. So we kind of prioritize if you can have a gateway. Um, and then the final is obviously energy consumption. Um, so to go into enrichments a little bit deeper, they're an ERC-1155 token, but we've added some additional functionality to them. So the idea is that you can uh, trade a token just like it would be a regular NFT, um, like on an open marketplace on OpenSea. But once you've bound the token to an NFT, it's actually tied to it forever. So it's basically a permanent asset at that point in time. Um, the cool thing about that is once it's bound, it goes along with the NFT itself. So once you transfer it to somebody else, they inherit the enrichments that are all bound to it. Um, let's see, only the current owner can actually bind the enrichment. So you have to be the actual owner to add one to an NFT. And then um, the really important part is that there are other platforms that are trying to do this, but they're calling them like synthetics. So the idea is that you deposit the NFT into a contract. Um, and we're trying to take a different approach because when you do that, you sort of lose the underlying initial properties of the NFT. Um, like a different platforms, for example, let you into a Discord if you own the NFT. And if you put that into a different contract, then technically you're no longer the owner. So we're trying to avoid that. There we go. Um, so why am I presenting at a sustainable event? Um, so the idea is really that we think that we can um, probably promote building these NFTs in like a very sustainable way. Um, and Daniel had already mentioned one of the ways that we can do this is by acting as a green packaging entity. Um, so we could do that in two different ways. The first is by being green by default, sort of co-opting the idea. We can accomplish sustainable goals, you know, in a, a fairly traditional way by offsetting our, our um, carbon emissions and offsetting all the NFTs that run through our platform. Uh, but this is really capital intensive and obviously very manual. So the other option would be to try to automate that process. We would do that by using our enriched assets. Um, so to enrich an asset, Daniel touched on a couple of these things, but we take the carbon credit token entities, which are capable of producing tokenized virgin versions of carbon credits. Um, they can get put into an index, uh, with, which I'll let Seasons talk about more, but that would be able to batch a bunch of carbon credit token um, into one single index and then produce an ERC-20 off of those. Once we've done that, we can source those carbon credit tokens into our, into our contract. Um, so we would actually do this at the time that we bind the NFE to the NFT. Um, so once you bind it, we pass in the actual carbon output that the NFT has. So we calculate the carbon emissions up front, and then we call the bind method and we pass in the total number of carbon credits that are required to offset that NFT or to go carbon negative. Um, and one other really potentially useful um, aspect of this is that when it comes to being able to enrich, you don't necessarily have to do an individual NFT. So this concept could actually apply for an entire contract itself. Uh, which opens the doors for a lot of things. We could um, carbon offset like an entire Board Apes collection, for example, just with one enrichment, if the if the project owner wanted to do that. Board Apes suck. <laughs> <laughs> um, so some of the other ways that we're supporting BICOG is through uh, just like technical advisement. We've been building products for a little while in the space and DApps, so we're helping out on like the analytics and dashboarding side, um, and then. We've produced some educational content in the past. Uh, Weath.io was one of them, which was like relatively successful. So we'd like to cre recreate that for the for the Bicog team. Here we go. All right. Well, that's the last slide, anyways. Um, yeah. Thanks everyone for watching, for listening. <laughs> okay. Yes, sir. Um, that's a technical decision we made up front. We might actually produce both. It's just the very first version of them are going to be permanent. Um, there's like a couple reasons for that. The first one is that like 
when, um, when you bind something to the NFT, especially the case itself, it represents all of the data around the NFT. So if you were to unbind it, it's kind of weird because we don't, like where would that data go, right? It represents the NFT that was originally bound to. Um, so then I guess you would have to like delete the registry or you know, get rid of it and then allow someone to move it to something else. And so that was kind of the thought behind it there, especially from a case registry perspective. But, but you're right that we could, we could make them unbindable for certain other types. Yeah. Cool, easy, that's it, huh? Ha, 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 ha.